Hi there, welcome to Crossover. Thanks so much for checking in with us and welcome to our Labor Day weekend service, which here in the States heralds the end of summer, but I'm not quite willing to accept that as we've still got some swimming and summer days uh, that we'll be able to enjoy in the weeks ahead. So I just want to take a, a few moments to uh, continue really uh, part two in, in a short sub-series on God's amazing promises. Last week we started looking at the promise of the Father in the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I want to pick up on that today and speak a little bit about uh, receiving the promise. And, and the more we understand of the mystery, <clears throat> perhaps we can be more open then to, to receiving, to being open to the otherness of God. Won't you take a moment just to pray with me? Father God, I just thank you for the wonders of your word, for the wonders of who you are that we see in nature, we experience in so many different ways. I pray, Lord, that every person listening in would be touched by uh, the hand of God in ways to refresh, to refuel. I pray, Lord, that you'd open our understanding so that we would see and understand and know more of you. I said in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week we started looking at who the Holy Spirit is. In the Old Testament, the name Ruach is used for spirit, which means breath or wind. In the New Testament, the word Pneuma, which also means uh, breath or wind, speaks of the Holy Spirit. And I, I really um, just, when we think of the, the Spirit, I, I think we so often think of the otherness of God, that um, sometimes we, we build up some defense mechanisms, some fear responses. Now, Jesus in John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus actually wanted to make the Holy Spirit noble. He spoke about the person of the Holy Spirit, how the Spirit of God comes to be our counselor, our advocate, our standby, our support, our resource for life and our faith walk. So um, in many respects, for, for us to engage in relating to Spirit, in receiving the promise of the Father, we need to be open to, to some of the mysteries, some of the wonder that exists in the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit provides the power for us to become all God wants us to be, both as individuals and as the church. For a moment, think of Peter. Peter was the disciple who would talk before he, act, before he thought. Uh, you know, the words would be out of his mouth. Uh, he often acted on impulse. Uh, you think about him seeing Jesus incarnated and then wanting to build a temple. He cuts off the ear of an attacking God. He hides, then he betrays Jesus. This is not the Peter that we read of in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, we see the impact of the Holy Spirit filling John and Peter. They begin preaching in the marketplace and 3,000 people come to know the Lord. Then we see Peter going on from there to discern when Ananias and Sapphira, a couple in the church, were lying and he, he called them on it and said, you're not lying to us, you're lying to the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, an extraordinary event happened where both Ananias and Sapphira fell down dead. That's enough to put the fear of God into you, I think. Um, so we find a new level of power and boldness in Peter through these early chapters in the book of Acts. And what we see as the, the story, the narrative, of the New Testament church unfolding in Acts, we see that as individuals responded to the impact of the Holy Spirit in their lives, the life of the church took on a whole new um, impetus. So today I just want to touch a little bit on what you can expect when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. What does it look like when you receive the Holy Spirit? That's what I want to touch on today and then next week I want to just take time to explore being prayed for, being uh, waiting on God for the infilling of the Holy Spirit that um, you would be absolutely empowered to do all that you need to do to live life to the fullest in the hands of God. So today 
What can you expect from being filled with the Holy Spirit? The first point is it's a transforming experience. There's a definite before and after experience. By Acts 10, we discover Peter moving into an entirely new level in his walk with God, where he had prayed and fasted for three days. And in that time, he had a vision where um, a, a, a sheet filled with unclean animals was dropped down in kind of in a vision in front of him and he heard the words rise and eat rise and eat rise and eat and so for peter in that moment he thought he was being tempted because he was fasting and he resisted but the the reality is that he had taken a step that we, we don't see before. He was spending time praying and fasting and because of the vision when strangers came to his door, he was ready to respond to what God, the opportunities God was bringing to him. And he went with these strangers to the house of Cornelius. And in the culture of the time, a good Jewish boy wasn't going to mix with the Gentiles because they were considered unclean just like the unclean animals that he had seen in the vision but you see because he's filled with the holy spirit his responses now are an entirely transformed response so what we find is that uh, being filled with the holy spirit is a transforming experience we find being filled with the Holy Spirit will bring new ingredients into your life. Again, I want to bring out this thing of before and after because there's the nature of human nature. And then as you're filled with the Holy Spirit, there's some of the nature of God that is deposited into you. And there's this change that takes place one degree at a time. One degree of glory by another, Scripture says. So in Acts 10, verse 34, we read, Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. And Peter, as he shared the gospel with Cornelius and the whole household of Cornelius, everyone hearing Peter's words came into saving faith. They believed in Jesus Christ and what uh, everything that he, he, he offers. There was just this complete wholehearted response from everyone. And so Peter, seeing it, had to accept, had to realize that the gospel of Jesus was not only for good Jewish followers, but the gospel of Jesus was for every nation, every culture, every tongue, every tribe. And it's a message that we still need to know today. And that is uh, that there, there is uh, the deposit of God for every nation on the face of the earth. I just read this week that there are now one million Christians in the nation of Iran. And uh, that's an extraordinary thing representation really of of this transformative experience when god gets a hold of you your life changes now for peter new ingredients were added to his life we 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 see this really from the moment that he was filled with the holy spirit as they were waiting together the disciples uh, in Jerusalem, we see a boldness come upon him. And it's not the impetuous boldness of um, acting before he, he had even worked things through, thinking with his mouth. This is a boldness that brought a tremendous sustained follow through in serving Jesus in his life. But the other thing that we find in Acts 10 is that uh, Peter had a filter, if you like, a bias about his culture, about who God was and how God was going to work in his culture. And that vision, rise that and vision of rise and eat uh, w was really to break open in Peter um, the bias both regarding how God was going to work and the bias of uh, his culture. And, and so the new ingredient added to Peter's life is the ingredient of a lack of discrimination, not a lack of discernment, a lack of judgmentalism towards others. And, and you, you see this, that he was able then to minister to Gentiles with complete freedom, 
with uh, a, a complete lack of, of judgment, of discrimination, and how much our world needs this. So I, I'm just going to say right here, the, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit in our times is so needed so that we're able to speak boldly, but without judgment, where we're able to, um, to reach into people groups uh, that are different to us, that think differently to us, and, and we're, we're able to find the heart of God for every tongue, tribe, nation, everything going on. Our society is in a really complex state at the moment, but God remains consistent and true and faithful, and that's what we can feed on. So um, what can we expect from being filled with the Holy Spirit? It's a transformative experience. Being filled with the Spirit of God brings new ingredients into your life. And the third thing you can expect is that others will see a difference. Uh, there was a before and after with Peter. And uh, we, we read in Acts 10, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those who were of the circumcision, the, the Jews that had come with Peter, were astonished as the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles as well. So you actually find this um, transformative experience is not something that is isolated. It's not something that is hidden, but it actually helps others observe and see how God works and open up to the way of God working. Now, an interesting thing is that when the apostles and the followers of the way of Jesus heard that Peter had been in the house of the Gentiles, that all of this had happened, they actually called Peter in to give account for what was happening. And we read in Acts 11 18, when they heard these things, they became silent and they glorified God, saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. And was this huge aha moment for all the followers of Jesus who had been with him, who had followed in his way while he was on earth. Now there was a whole new level of understanding of revelation. And this was actually the ground bed for God preparing the church to take the good news of Jesus Christ to every corner of the world. And, and that is where we need to live. We are not an exclusive closed-in club. We are followers of way, truth, and life in Jesus that we can just take out and share wherever we go. So what we can expect from being filled with the Holy Spirit is a transformative experience, new ingredients added to your life and perhaps there are things that you've struggled with in your life, things that you've longed for and just not had the impetus or the power to reach out for. And the infilling of the Holy Spirit brings you to a platform where you're actually filled with the power of God to fulfill your, 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 your life calling, to fulfill and express your gifting, not just from your own resources, but from all the resources you have in God. And others are going to see the difference. And, you know, we often talk about um, needing to, to be able to share about the difference God is making in our lives. Now, when the people around you who know you begin to observe visible differences, things that in your temperament change, things in your conduct, and the way you actually uh, conduct yourself, carry yourself in relationships, that gives people pause to say, my goodness me, I actually see something here that is greater than the person standing in front of me. Uh, so others will see a difference. And then the, the fourth thing we see is that when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God brings impetus in the life of the church. Now, the word impetus speaks of forward moving energy. And when you think of you and I and the power of us, how when we are all individually filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and we gather together as the church family, what God begins to do in us, with us and through us becomes exponentially multiplied. Uh, so I, I want to just unpack a little bit of how you can, how, what this can look like um, from the writings of Paul we find in 1 Corinthians 12. 
There are diversities of gifts, and he's talking about specifically the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, there are diversities of gifts, but one Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works in all. And then he makes a statement, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So just a couple of thoughts to throw out to you here is that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, those God-given gifts and talents in your life are, are, are kind of a starter block. But God, when he fills you with his Spirit, gives you spiritual gifts that are going to be used as you exercise them. They're going to be used in the body for the profit of all, Paul says, so that your gift is used to build up and encourage others in the church family. And um, so gifts are diverse and varied. So that points to uniqueness. It also points to different levels of gifting. Uh, we all, most of us, can encourage others, but there are some who have a gift of encouragement that's just at a completely different level. Barnabas, is the, the name Barnabas means son of encouragement. And this was his gift to the body. And he encouraged people in the church. He encouraged Paul in his ministry so that Paul was freed actually to flow in the fullness of who he was, the fullness of his gifting, the fullness of his authority. And this works in many different ways. There are some people who are really gifted to make money and to, to help the management of finances in the church body. That is, perhaps you don't think of it as a spiritual gift, but that's a spiritual gift that benefits the body functioning well. So the Spirit comes, gives you gifts, and they're different levels of gifting. And <clears throat> what that means as well is you, you, you may be starting out and saying, well, I have a gift of encouragement, or I have a gift and ability to pray. But as you exercise that gift, you grow and there's a level of faith that's added that brings boldness and you're able to express more and more of your gifting, which is part of the whole plan. So the, the other thing Paul makes clear is that gifts are given to all for the benefit of all. There is not one person in the body of Christ who is left out. And I'm going to encourage you as you go into the week ahead just to take a daily prayer into your, your prayer life. And that is, come Holy Spirit. I often talk about uh, the, 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 the breath prayers that follow the pattern of breathing where you inhale and you say something. And it really just needs to be uh, four, five, six words. And, and if you inhale and exhale and you take just one line of prayer that follows your breathing, it becomes a form of meditation. But it also brings you to a place of intention where you focus very much on asking one thing from God. And your whole being then becomes centered on engaging with God at this level. So you can try this at home, of course. You just breathe in. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. You begin to open yourself up to wonder, to mystery, but also to the person of the Holy Spirit. And I think all of us, we want to, uh, we want to help others. We want to lift others up. We want to build others up. And when you look at this reality that the Spirit of God, the promise of the Father, comes to bring impetus in the life of of the church through gifts. You realize that sometimes it's you and I that are the, 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 the make or break difference between being able to help someone else. Uh, as pastor, there are many times through the years that, um, you know, when a crisis happens, no one plans those crisis moments, right? And when a crisis happens, I need to be available for prayer, for encouragement, for a listening ear even. And some of those crises happen when, when I'm tired, when I'm weary. And I, I have to come into exercising the gift in the spirit 
where I actually will give out and trust God to, to pour back into me so that there's a flow of life and resourcing that happens for the benefit of all. So just in closing, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a definite and conscious experience. You may experience a time of emotional prayerfulness or a sense of deep blessing. You may experience uh, receiving power of direct awareness of just being tapped into the presence of God in a palpable, tangible kind of way. The point is that there is a conscious experience of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And this is why I think it's important for us to take time just to pray on a, a daily basis. Come Holy Spirit. There's time. It's important for us to take time in the church community where we, we pray, we lay hands on people and, and we just ask God to fill every person with the Holy Spirit. So there's a conscious uh, defining experience. And Paul actually says in Ephesians 5, 15, he says, be constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and so you realize you actually have to stay tuned to the presence of God. You have to open up to the mystery of God. And then you, I think, honestly, this is something we, we see in Acts where Jesus told the disciples right at the beginning, he said, stay in the city and wait for the promise of the Father. And they did that together. Why? Because they didn't know what they were waiting for, but there was an, an atmosphere where they were praying, where they were worshipping. There was an atmosphere of expectation where they were praying for one another. They were believing that God was going to touch them. And this is what I want to encourage you in is, is a, a place of expectation that God would reach and meet you in new and extraordinary ways in the person of the Holy Spirit. So let's just agree that we will be learners and receivers. Let's just agree that we will give serious devotion and energy to being open to the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And in that, let God be God, perhaps in new and fresh ways in your life. Last week, I mentioned the fact that uh, every one of us has a container in a sense. We're born into a certain culture, language, uh, geography, and that defines a lot of who we are. And then possibly we have a God container and everything we know about God, everything we experience is in that container. And if we're going to be open to mystery, to wonder in the person of the Holy Spirit, we have to accept, admit, own, and be open to the fact that that God container is, is going to need to be bigger. Um, and, and in that, guys, and, and I, I just want to close with this, in that is to trust God. Trust the goodness of God. There's a reason the Holy Spirit is called the gift of the Holy Spirit. The reason is, this is a gift that you don't want to re-gift. A gift is not um, a bad package wrapped up. It's not something to be distrusted, but to be received and celebrated and enjoyed. I'd love to pray with you and pray with you for the week ahead, where you would know the comfort of the Holy Spirit in His counsel, in His guidance, that the, the Holy Spirit would bring an abundance of discernment into your encounters with people and that you would begin to witness the Spirit of God at work in your life and that people would look and say, God's Spirit is at work in your life. So Father God, I just thank you for this amazing gift that you did not leave us orphans, but you sent the Spirit of God to be with us at all times, to comfort, to guide, to direct, to testify to the truth. And we just want to open up to you, Spirit of God, breath of God, wind of God. Come and blow through our lives to create a place, a, a temple that is absolutely consecrated to the sacred work of God. And, and I pray that you would come into our lives to refresh, to comfort, yes, but to bring the power of God so that we would be witnesses 
speakers of light and truth with power that would bring transformation in the very fabric of our society. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to just speak a blessing over you as you go into this week, that filled with the Spirit of God, you would be empowered to be a voice of unity, to be a voice of truth and compassion, of justice and mercy, that God, by His grace, would fill with you with His Spirit so that wherever you go, people would be touched with the presence of God, with the knowledge of God, with the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I really believe that as we open up to Him, we can be part of the transformation of society in our times where there's so much anarchy, anger, resistance. We can begin to speak in a way that brings not just unity, but the power of a united stand under God, serving Him and not serving selfish desires. So I don't want to get going on another message, but we'll, uh, we'll talk some more about that. You have a fantastic day.